Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about spacing elements in web design specifically. I'm going to show you the simple rules we do here and how you can get your websites to feel natural, smooth, with a great hierarchy. And the main benefits of this is number one, it's going to be great for the user to have recognizable patterns. They're going to understand what content belongs to what elements, how it's all grouped together. They don't even need to think about it. And the second is that it's going to be much easier for your developer to build this, right? We'll get into that. So the first thing we need to be aware of is the UX law of proximity. So if we have a look at this website here, lawsofux.com, and I'll leave a link to this page in the video description. Let's look at the law of proximity. I think this is the bare minimum you need to understand in order to get a website to sing. So it states that objects that are near or proximate to each other tend to be grouped together. Makes sense. Key takeaways being proximity helps to establish relationship with nearby objects. Elements in close proximity are perceived to share similar functionality or traits. And proximity helps users understand and organize information faster and more efficiently. This is really important. People don't spend a long time on websites. It's our job to make it as easy as possible for them to scan and digest the content. Let's have a quick look at this example that they've included, which is really helpful, which shows a Google search result. And we know, everyone knows this, right? This is one result here at the top. This is the next result. This is the next result. We can scan this without even thinking, and we know that. And that is all to do with the spacing of these elements. So each sort of card has, or each result, which I would call a card, has a maybe four or eight pixels space between each. And then between the, that result and the following result, there's maybe about 40 or 56 pixels gap there. So we can see groups content together, and then the next group of content, and then the next group of content. And that's all it is. So this is the law of proximity. Study that one up. Have a look at the rest of this website. It's a fantastic resource, and you should read all of these. There's also a great book, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. So let's have a look at this design now with that in mind. We can obviously see that these three elements as part of the hero design are grouped closer than they are than the space above and below. So you can see we've got 120 pixels padding top and bottom, and then between these elements, we've got 32 pixels, and then the button group, we've got 12 to show that they are their own separate subgroup. So where do you get these numbers from, I hear you ask? Well, let's have a look over at our handy spacing sizes cheat sheet over here. And just got a few notes here to kind of try and explain this to you. So first thing, we want to contain the information. We don't want the information spreading all the way to the sides of the website. We need some space. We need some breathing room around everything. 1200 pixels is a good place to start from container. A lot of people do 1280. Some people go down as low as sort of 960-ish, which I feel is a bit dated and everything's a bit too narrow and squashed. I like, always like to start 1200. And when we're designing, we set this up on 40, 40 width artboard. And then we want to think about padding between sections. We typically use three different sizes of padding between sections. And these will always be divisible by eight, which we'll get into in a moment. So maybe you'd have, you know, your large padding is 144, your medium is 80, and your small is 40. That's just, you know, obviously each design is different. That's just a good place to start. This is going to ensure consistency. We don't want all sections to have different amount of padding. It's nothing worse than from a developer's point of view when he opens up a design and sees 67.5 pixels at the top and 158 at the bottom. He, that means he's going to set up a separate class for the top and the bottom spacing, and then the next section is different. So he's like, oh, goodness, he or she, sorry. Um, and they're going to have to do a different class for the next bit and then a different class for the next one, because they should be able to look at your design, create all of their styles before to make their job easy and efficient, which saves money for the client, right? Everybody's happy. So this is all by using what's known as a four or eight pixel grid. Hopefully you've heard of that before. And the reason we do this is just that everybody uses it. It's really easy um, to work out. The spacing system just works really well on the eyes. It's easy to digest. And the reason why I say four or eight is a lot of people call it four, but if we laid out all of our spacing and if we did this in increments of four, you'd end up with hundreds and hundreds of different options. You might be a bit overwhelmed and you don't really need them. So we use um, four pixels up until 20. 
So a lot of the times we space elements four pixels between each other, like in a little card or a little small print text and stuff like that. Sometimes eight, 12 is great, 16 is lush, 20, pretty good, nice size for a checkbox. And then we get to 24 and that's obviously divisible by eight. And then we start jumping up by eights. So if, for example, you laid something out with 24 pixels between each three, all, all of the three elements in your group, and it didn't quite feel right, you just jump up to 32. You don't need to go to 28 or 29. We just stick to this eight pixel grid. So these few simple rules are gonna help you. And you can also have a think about container sizes. So how we have padding between sections, we've got three sizes here. You can have three container sizes as well. You can have a large, a medium, and a small. All of that is just gonna help your design flow really well. So let's have a look at the example and break it down. So if we turn our grids on, we can see that we've got a 12 column grid set up. There are 32 pixels between each of the 12 columns, divisible by eight. As we've already gone over, 120 top and bottom. So that's our sort of large spacing for a section that we've decided here. And inside this hero, we've got 32 between each. Great. So we're adhering to the law of proximity straight away. We then have this image, which is set in a little bit. So this is only spanning 10 columns instead of 12. And we might say, hey, developer, this is what our container medium is. It's going to be this big. Then we have our next section. So we can see here we've got essentially three rows of contents. We've got two rows in this grid and the title here. So we've got 56 pixels between that. We've got 56 pixels between there. This means that the developer is going to just create one grid. It's going to have 56 pixels space between, and then each of the columns is going to have 32 pixels space between. Really easy, right? So what we want to think as designers is next time we're making a grid or a section that needs a headline and a grid or just three columns, let's do the same thing, right? Let's have 56 pixels between the title and the grid. Let's have 32 pixels between the cards. That way, the developer only has to code this once. They can then copy and paste that code. And another great benefit is um, that it's recognizable for the user, right? They, they've they already seen this. They don't want to then be hit by a, a 25 column grid. Okay, what the hell's going on here? They've already recognized this pattern. They see it again. And the third major benefit here is that it's going to keep the CSS as light as possible, which is what we want to do. When we're developing websites, the game is to make it as efficient and clean as possible. If this, if this had, you know, 100 pixels between here and 90 between here, it's gonna be a lot more difficult to code. You're gonna to have to write a lot more code to get that spacing to work and it's gonna clutter the CSS file. So again here, next section, 120, 120. And then here, we'll come back to this in a second. Sometimes you can break out of this grid, that's okay. A lot of people think, oh my goodness, what on earth are you doing? No one's gonna come in and measure your designs, right? We just wanna be, we have to find that balance between adhering to the rules using the UX laws, which are all based in psychology, and being creative. Sometimes if you're too limited, you can't. your creativity can't work. So sometimes you can break out, that's okay. And I'll show you how we set this up and why in a moment. And here we go, another example. We've got a three column grid. Let's have a look, 32 pixels between each element. So this is the exact same grid as above, just the card content inside is styled slightly differently, and that's fine, because we need to put in some creative flair here and there. 120 top, 120 bottom, perfect. So last thing to talk about, let's just quickly have a look at this, put our guides on. Oh my God, look, that is like a third over this column. Oh, don't want to open Slack. This is coming to here, what on earth is going on? Actually, in the design, it should be like this, and I'll tell you why. Right, let's have a look. Looks good, feels natural, fine. Let's have a look if we adhered to the rules, right? Let's put this image here so it's only spanning the six columns exactly. And let's turn our UI back on. And let's make the space between 32. And that's off, have a look. Feels really cluttered, doesn't it? It's too close. And especially because this image here on the left has got loads of space in it, the whole theme of this design here is about space we need space right so i'm going to whack that back up to 80. 80 is still divisible by eight i'm cool with that let's have a look at this so this spans six columns right this image 
And the reason I had it set here before is that this is then 50% of the container width. This means the coding is really easy and we can reuse this quite simply across the site. We can just have a class called image 50% and it literally fills up 50% of its parent. We can just reuse that, that's fine. No one is gonna go and measure and go, oh my goodness, you haven't allowed for the gutter between the columns. This doesn't line up. Let's make it line up and have a look what happens. Uh, so we'll just increase the padding here. Now it's working as part of the grid. Let's have a look. Too far away now. They don't feel like they're connected. It feels like we've got a floating image on one side, some floating text on the other side, and the gap is too big that your eyes kind of don't know where to look. They're trying to look out at the same time. So that's why I say it's okay to break it. So what you would do is you probably start in this with 32 pixels between and you go, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. It doesn't quite look right. And then if you put your cursor in here, hold shift and press up on your keyboard, it's just going to bump it up in increments of eight. So let's bump it up until it feels good. 64 looks good. I'm happy with that, but I keep it at 80. Very happy with 80. That works. It's no problem. Sometimes that's fine. Okay. Just don't go crazy with it. So I'm hoping that this video helps might be a good idea to take a screenshot of this if I keep that on there for you so you've got some sizes to work with. But just remember, it's all about consistency, space, and hierarchy. If you don't know how to create good hierarchy in your designs, the easiest way is to get your design to work just with the typography, just having a really clear set of rules around your typography. And if you're looking for a video on how to do that, we'll leave one at the end of this video for you. I hope you got something useful out of this. If you did, give us a thumbs up. And if you've got any comments, let us know down there. We're always around and um, we will see you in the next video. Thanks.